Welcome to this technical update. My name is Andrew Bird. I'm a principal consultant with Metal Toledo in the UK. And today I'm going to cover tools for mixing and heat transfer assessments using Dynachem, as well as some exciting new features coming very soon. There are many industry publications in Dynachem resources on the topic of mixing and heat transfer, showing how our customers have used these tools for their own projects. We'd recommend you take a look at these on our site for further details. Around 8,000 projects were done in 2021 using the Dynachem tools. There are many questions people ask us about mixing and heat transfer when scaling from lab to plant. From the simple, will it fit in my vessel, to the more complicated, are my solids suspended and how long will it take to cool? The mixing and heat transfer toolbox allows you to answer these questions. In this talk, I'm going to give an overview of the basic concepts in mixing and heat transfer with examples of how vessel assessments can be used when scaling from lab to plant. First, mixing. The picture here just shows the complex nature of a turbulent flow. When we talk about mixing, we need to think about the phases, those are solids, liquids, gases, present in the vessel as there are different mixing duties to think about. In a single liquid phase system, we think about the amount of power being put into the liquid and then the power per unit mass or volume, as well as blending. In a multi-phase system, we need to think about a minimum level of agitation to keep the phase dispersed in the liquid, and also mass transfer between the phases. In cases where you have a fed batch reaction and the reactions are fast relative to the mixing, then the local mixing around the feed point can be very important. For single phase mixing, one very common indicator of the intensity of mixing is the power per unit mass. This comes from the power draw, which may be calculated from the agitator torque. It's characterized by a power number for an impeller, which can be used to assess the effects of impeller speed and scale on power. Note the strong dependence of scale. Here it's a diameter to the power of five. Also important is knowing what flow regime we're in, especially in small lab equipment, as turbulent flow promotes mixing. The plot on the top uh, shows the power number versus Reynolds number for different agitators. It also shows the flow regime. The parity plot here shows comparisons of power number for different Optimax and EasyMax configurations. The Dynachem toolbox versus some CFD comparisons. Torque is too small to measure in these small vessels. We can also calculate mixing time and blending um, in these situations, as well as a range of other outputs such as shear rate, Reynolds number, etc. These screenshots show how these assessments can be done in the Dynachem Mixing and Heat Transfer Toolbox. First, you select your mixing task, here batch liquid mixing, then select your vessel. You can also compare two vessels. You also enter the vessel contents, which are not shown, and the impeller speed. This particular is a bottom-mounted impeller. The power per unit mass and blend time are calculated. You can also scale from one vessel to another, for instance, to find the impeller speed to maintain constant power per unit mass, as shown here. Uh, all parameters in the utility come from literature data, and we like to compare these to measured data wherever possible. This plot shows the mixing time in a 50 litre bioreactor. The orange line shows the predictions compared to the measurements over a range of speeds. Multi-phase mixing is a large area. I'm just going to show our most common applications here. Firstly, for solid liquid systems, we calculate the just suspended speed, which is the speed to just lift the particles from the base. This allows their area to be exposed for reaction or crystallization. The photograph on the right uh, shows a vessel viewed from both the, the side and from the bottom. And you can see that the particles sitting on the bottom there are not suspended. Lack of suspension can lead to long reaction times, um, which, which can have adverse quality uh, uh, effects. Uh, you, for instance, you get more impurity production on scale if the reaction time is extended. Similarly, in gas liquid systems, when gas is either fed through a sparger or dispersed through vortexing, the minimum speed required to create a good gas dispersion is important. It's also possible to estimate the KLA, which is like a rate constant for the dissolution process. 
There are also other tools for fitting the KLA measurements, which are not shown here. As Kevin showed in the last talk, it's also important to know the gas sweep rate in practice, as this can limit um, the, the gas removal rate in, in some applications. The plot at the bottom shows predicted versus measured KLA for a gas liquid system over a range of scales, giving you an idea of the accuracy. Um, the bottom plot now shows the uh, impact of KLA on the concentration profiles in a gas liquid system. In this case, it's a bio, a bioreactor. Multi-phase mixing calculations are done much in the same way as for single phase, but you choose a different task. So in this case, we've chosen solid liquid. Uh, and this, in addition to uh, putting in the uh, vessel amounts at the bottom here, the amounts of solvents, you also put in the amount of solid. And on the right-hand side, it shows the results, calculating um, the results we saw before, the power per unit matter blend time, but also now the solid suspension, NJS. We use the safety factor 1.2 as the correlation is accurate, plus or minus 20%. So this tells you we need to run at 36 RPM to suspend these particular solids. If you have a fed batch reaction, where the reactions are much faster than mixing, then the local mixing around the feed point is important. There are a range of different mixing scales, and the importance can be assessed with a few key experiments. This is also known as the Born Protocol. Micromixing and mesomixing both depend on the power per unit mass around the feed point. This CFD image shows that it's far that the local power per unit mass is far from uniform, with red values, high values indicated near the impeller, and low values indicated by the blue regions near the top of the tank. Um, the power per unit mass in the impeller can be 20 to 100 times of that near the top of the vessel. Um, in this particular protocol, where we've mentioned macro mixing, this is the blending um, of the, on the scale of the vessel. In the toolbox, we can calculate time scales for meso and micro mixing and see which one is the limiting one. We also consider if you have back mixing into the feed pipe, which results in the reaction happening in a very low mixing environment. These calculated timescales can be used in a dynamic model to predict the size of the feed zone and implications on the reactions. The plot on the right shows pH in the feed zone in green compared to the average pH in the bulk of the vessel in red during an acid addition. Now I move on to talk about heat transfer, which is obviously important for the safe operation on scale. As you're probably aware, the heat transfer performance generally drops as we increase in scale due to lower surface area per unit volume. The chart shows this for a range of scales. At the small scale, it takes a few minutes to cool from 30 degrees down to zero, whereas in a large vessel, this can take several hours. This is related to the UA of the vessel. The toolbox allows a calculation of the UA, which comprises the wetted area from the geometry and amount of liquid, plus the vortex, which can create some extra area, and the U-value, which can be estimated from engineering correlations. And this U-value is a series uh, of resistances through the vessel wall and the, and the fluid films either side of the vessel wall. The calculation allows you to see which of the heat transfer resistance limits from the bar chart below, e.g. it could be inside the vessel wall uh, or on the jacket side, and this will allow you to see if increasing the agitator speed will improve the heat transfer. Um, you can also see the UA versus volume, as shown in the top right, um, because area increases with volume, and you get other outputs like the wall temperature, the cooling and heating rate, etc. Finally, with the UA, uh, you can also make a quick estimate of the safe feed time with certain assumptions. The UA values can also be fed into other dynamic models, for example, reaction models, distillation models, for more detailed predictions. Heat transfer is obviously key in assessing process safety of reactions, and models can include the UA to predict the behaviour on scale, including the loss of cooling. We have many models and tools in this area to assess process safety from UA in combination with calorimetry data, such as RC1 data, ARC data, DSC data, for the main and for decomposition reactions. The small process schemes plots at the bottom 
just represent different dynamic transient models across the range of typical unit operations where mixing and heat transfer are important. The final example here just shows typical results from using the toolbox on a crystallization process, looking at both mixing and heat transfer. There are a lot of things to consider when scaling up a crystallization, from the heating, cooling, to the mixing, which impacts the solid suspension and the nucleation rates. The toolbox allows a quick computation of the of comparison of vessels when going from lab to plant. Note it's not possible in general to keep all the mixing parameters the same on scale, so you have to decide which are the key ones for your process. Before finishing, I'd just like to say a few words about how the equipment information gets into the toolbox and how the vessel lists are populated. In the latest version of Dynachem, we use an equipment data service to pull the equipment data into the mixing and heat transfer toolbox. On the equipment side, we need a number of inputs, such as the vessel geometry, impellers, jackets, geometry, etc. You can store these in your own database using the equipment data service by our administrator. Then users can use the vessel update button to get your company and partner's equipment into the toolbox without needing to know where the database file is. Very shortly, at the end of June, we're updating this database for extra fields, approximately doubling the size, and also including new Metal Toledo vessels like the EasyMax, OptiMax, RC1, and common configurations of those reactors. The new EDS can also be viewed and administrated securely on the web. If you'd like to learn more, then please go to these sites mentioned. The Autochem site, site for information on lab reactors and in-situ analysis and Dynachem resources for more information on mixing and heat transfer assessments using Dynachem. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, then please let us know and I'll be happy to address these.